We have just disembarked from the magenta train and uh, Ian and I are wearing our matching royal blue t-shirts today. <laughs> it's not raining, which I'm very happy about. Uh, let's go see if we can find out where our hotel is and see what Colmar looks like. This is a pretty cool building that we're walking by on our walk from the train station to our hotel. And here is another interesting thing we're encountering on our walk to the hotel. Don't know what this tower is, have to find out tomorrow. We just arrived in beautiful Colmar and got settled in our hotel apartment. And now we are headed to dinner in the Little Venice area, one of the most famous places in Colmar, so can't wait to see what it looks like. Here are the first of hundreds of half timber buildings I will be videoing. All of the painting accenting the half timber is just lovely. So this is the issue with Colmar, is we're trying to walk to dinner, but I keep getting distracted because everywhere I look, it is phenomenally picturesque, interesting, quaint, whatever you want to say. I just have to get beyond this building. I really do want to eat dinner, but it's just so interesting. So many good restaurants because this area is known for all the Alsatian wine and produce and delicious food. Can't wait to try it. Yes, this street holds more beautiful half-timbered buildings and wonderful shutters, but what else it has is just amazing smells. It smells so great here. Biscuiterie. That sounds like a place with cookies. Boulangerie, patisserie. Forgive my terrible French pronunciation. Creperie. Doesn't look like it's open. But this is probably the place that the great smells are coming from. Maybe we'll have to try that tomorrow. I love this little corner here. Just so many little nooks and angles and dormers and windows. I just saw the sign, the hotel's from 1562. This is a really pretty hotel. It is called the Romantic Hotel. From where we're sitting here on the sidewalk cafe, I can see the canal, the market hall across the street, and those beautiful half-timber buildings in the setting sun of the golden hour. Here is the beautiful little restaurant where we're going to have dinner. Version Original 68, however you say that in French. And not only do they have English translation in their menu, but they also have a picture book so we can see what everything looks like, which is very handy. So we are ordering this. It is a tart flambe, which we can't tell exactly what it is, but it seems like a crepe with stuff on top that's broiled. Bacon, onion, ham, goat cheese, nuts, honey, and figs. That sounds very interesting. So we're going to try that. And a nice healthy salad with tomatoes and lettuce and cucumber and fresh goat cheese and sunflower seeds. This looks fabulous. Some baguette and then the tarte flambe. This, the one we got looks even better than the one in the picture book. It does. Come on, you know when I see a place like this, I've got to take a selfie. You're a lucky duck getting to live in a view like this. These are some really interesting flavors. Nutella, melon. Oh, look at this. They have, they have Smurf flavor, Ian. Yeah, I wonder what that is. I don't know. It's that blue one back there. I've not seen Rocher before. That looks really good. That's salted caramel. Got Oreo. But then look over here. There's hazelnut and then violette. I might have to try that. This is Ian's gelato. He has, I think, blueberry flavor and then uh, Ferrero Rocher on the bottom. And I have violet flavored. Well, we're in France. <laughs> so I think a little food review recap of the evening is in order. The restaurant was fabulous. It was just what we wanted. Fresh food, lots of 
fruits and veggies and the pizza-like thing, that tart flambe was fantastic. Just a super thin crust and the flavors of all the ingredients were perfect together. We had pizza when we were in Italy and we wanted it to be something great like that and it just wasn't. That was wonderful. Now for the gelato review. Ian thought it was a little crazy getting the violet flavor, but I actually really loved it. It was super creamy and just very <laughs> faint hint of floral uh, violet flavor. I thought it was really good. He didn't love it, but he did love his flavors. Yep, I got Ferrero Rocher. It's really good. And also, I think black currant. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't understand any French, so. The animated Disney movie Beauty and the Beast from 1991 shows the main character Belle in her hometown, a quaint little French village which was inspired by several real life locations in France. I'm not promising you that Colmar was one of them, but there are definitely some similarities. Check out these stills from the movie and then see a recap of some of my favorite views from around the streets of Colmar. Whether or not Colmar had a Disney movie made about it, it is definitely a magical fairy tale village nonetheless. I think this ramshackle collection of timber framed buildings epitomizes Colmar. In addition to the half timber, I'm really loving the shutters. Here in Colmar, so many cool old shutters. I love the detailed painting on the shutters of this building. I'm not sure how old it is, but I think it might be from the 1600s. Check out these shutters on this boulangerie. Probably not very usable, but beautiful and appropriate nonetheless. Okay, Dara would have an absolute fit if she were here right now seeing this. And I found some lovely dusty rose shutters in another part of the city as well. The wavy walls of age. Isn't this building wonderful how each floor juts out further than the one below it? Reminds me a little bit of the shambles in York. The sun always shines on TV. Well, according to the AHA song, but here in the real world of Magenta Otter Travels vlogs, sometimes it rains. <laughs> And unfortunately, this is our only full day in Colmar, so we're gonna have to walk around in the rain. Time to check out the market in search of breakfast. We'll start with the outdoor stalls. I've never seen these before. I've never seen such red pineapple. This market is beautiful. We just walked inside and it's very clean. And we're here early, so it's not a madhouse. These pastas look beautiful. We want to try something here for lunch. That looks really good. These look like beautiful local yogurts. The cheeses are tempting as well, but this bakery looks like the place for breakfast. All the pastries and the breads look amazing, but the decision has been made. This is the only type of escargot I'll be eating on this trip to France. Even though I'm not on Instagram anymore, I still have to get the Instagram photo of the beautiful French pastry against the picturesque French background. This little bird saw me holding up the pastry and was like, uh, hello, you giving that thing away? I'm here, I'm here. Throw me a crumb, man. This area is so interesting because it's been part of Germany and part of France kind of back and forth over the centuries. And there's still a lot of German spoken around here, as well as obviously French being the main language now. And of course, in a touristy place like Colmar, a lot of people have to get by with a little bit of English as well, which is very helpful to us. How appropriate is it that the road to get back to our hotel is called the American Street? Speaking of America, there is a very important link between Colmar and the United States. One of the most iconic images of the U.S. is the Statue of Liberty, and the sculptor who created Lady Liberty is Frederick Auguste Bartholdi, a native of Colmar. He was born in 1834 and moved to Paris with his family when he was nine years old. He studied art and architecture, and as he matured, became fascinated with the idea of creating a colossal statue that would be his legacy. After his first trip to the U.S. in 1871, 
He worked on realizing his goal of creating a monumental sculpture that would represent a gift of friendship between the countries of America and France. It was called Liberty Enlightening the World. The Statue of Liberty, as we call it now, was officially presented in 1886. Bertoldi died in Paris in 1904, but maintained his childhood home in Colmar throughout his life. And in 1922, this house in which he was born became the Bertoldi Museum. As you walk through Colmar, you see these brass directional arrows in the pavement, reminding you of Bertoldi and his work. We didn't visit the Bertoldi Museum, but I did visit another museum in Colmar, the Chocolate Museum. This museum is a multimedia experience that shows you about how cacao is grown and harvested and processed. It also explains the origin of chocolate consumption and how cocoa beans were used historically. Just in case you're getting the wrong idea seeing a rabbit next to these little cocoa beans, what this really is is showing how the Aztecs used cocoa beans as a form of currency. When Cortez first met Montezuma, he was given hot chocolate to drink. But of course, it was nothing like the hot cocoa we drink today. Cocoa butter was also used anciently to help heal wounds and also as sun cream. In the Middle Ages, cocoa came to Europe and eventually became a very fashionable part of high society, enjoyed by the aristocracy. The leap from drinking chocolate to chocolate bars happened thanks to a French pharmacist named Meunier in 1836, who created the first chocolate bar, and then the Fry's Chocolate Company in England that 10 years later created the first commercial chocolate bar. Because I worked at two different Swiss chocolate companies earlier in my life, and I've also visited the Chocolate Museum in Cadbury World in England, I knew a lot of the information shared in the Chocolate Museum, but it was still really fun to visit. I enjoyed seeing the Chocolate Statue of Liberty and these old chocolate molds, as well as some vintage magenta hot cocoa serving sets. The gift shop had some cute items, including a nod to a very British phrase. But of course, the best part of the visit were the chocolate samples that were given along the tour and the very indulgent hot chocolate that I was served at the end. It was made by submerging a block of decadent chocolate into frothy hot milk. Oh man, that looks delicious. That was phenomenal. <laughs> That was so good. After being reminded that legumes are not beans, they are vegetables, they decided to get this gratin de legume for lunch. And they're warming it up for us now. So rather than sitting at the restaurant like civilized people, Ian suggested that we eat our lunch here in the rain. He's huddled under this tree. He's found a place he says is dry. I love vegetables and melted cheese is my love language, so I'm pretty excited about this. Okay, break into it and let's see what it looks like. I think it has cheese and egg and then shredded like carrots and courgettes and stuff. That looks delicious. Yes, this is really tasty, but the eating circumstances are a bit ridiculous. There are various ways to tour Colmar in addition to walking or biking. One option is these cute trains, but we were anxious to get on the water and explore the city from the beautiful canal system. It gives an interesting new perspective to the places we had been walking around the day before. It was really rainy earlier today, so it's great to see the blue skies and some sun. Here's more water cans hanging off of things. A very popular site in Colmar. I'm filming people filming me. This is the old executioner's house. These flat bottom boats were originally used to transport fruits and vegetables to the market from the fields where they were harvested. We're going back through the ducks again. Uh oh. It just really seems like that duck's gonna get hit. But then they managed to dodge it. <laughs> There 
there's the most Instagram row of half timber houses, I think. All right, time to duck again. Selfie mode going under the tunnel. It's a hotel from 1562, known for its flowers decorating the hotel during the summer and Christmas decorations in the winter. I don't think we're gonna make it under that one. I think here's where we turn around. There is the steps up to the market where they used to deliver the produce that they brought on the boats. This part of Colmar is called Little Venice. And let's talk about this whole Little Venice moniker. Because if you go to Borton on the Water in the Cotswolds in England, they call that the Venice of the Cotswolds. And it's kind of like every place that has water or canals gets called Venice. I think that's kind of stretching it. It's nice that they have canals and bridges, but not every place needs to be called Little Venice. I do think that Little Venice is an appropriate name here in Colmar because the canal system really was an important part of the city and they have these wonderful boat tours. I really wanted to do that today. That was one of the biggest priorities that I had for our visit to Colmar. A great way to see the town from a different perspective, being on the water. And it was so fun tonight. It's only a 25 minute tour, but you just very peacefully glide along the water and get to see the gorgeous views of Colmar from the canal. So I highly recommend it. I thought it was fantastic. Let me know if you have done canal tours anywhere and what you thought of it and if you recommend it. Oh, if only my friends Rachel and especially Wills from Postcard and a Pint were here with me. I just found the perfect shop for Wills. I couldn't resist the Christmas shop myself. You see, we buy a Christmas ornament every year to signify something from the year. So I decided it was time to get a Colmar Christmas ornament to remember our trip to Europe this year. Oh, this looks very Alsatian. Oh, these big wheels of cheese are just amazing looking. Up in the upper shelves. Ooh, there's truffle cheese. That looks delicious. Oh my. That's pesto cheese. That shopkeeper was so nice. She let me try the lavender cheese. It was actually lavender, thyme, and rosemary. It was so delicious. It didn't taste very heavy with the lavender. It was just a nice rosemary, cheesy flavor with the others, uh, herbs complementing it. So I'm gonna see if I can get Ian to come back there and buy some cheese with me later. I learned a funny lesson when I was a university girl living in the Netherlands for the summer. I went with my girlfriend to a market and we tried to buy a wedge of cheese. And I said, I just want a little bit. And we ended up with a giant wedge of cheese that we ate for days and just couldn't finish because it was so huge. So here I am a million years later and I just went into that cute little cheese shop with the giant wedge, <laughs> giant cheese wheels and said I wanted to buy a little bit of cheese. You can't do that, people. You gotta say like 200 grams or something. I ended up with this massive <laughs> wedge of cheese. Thankfully, I'm going to visit friends tomorrow and it's vacuum sealed and will last a month. Cause look at this thing. It's like bigger than my head. Okay, I have settled the debate. Americans pronounce it nougat. Brits pronounce it nougar, and we're both wrong. 
the French pronounce it nougat. No T at the end, no R at the end, just nougat. I asked the woman who was in there making all the nougat, and that is what she said. So there. Every street in Colmar is beautiful. I don't know what it is with these pixelated Minecraft people on the street signs, but I want to go check out Rue St. Jean because it looks just so picturesque. Oh yeah, beautiful, very old half timber buildings. And at the end, that looks like a church with one of those gorgeous green tile roofs. The design on it like we started seeing in Austria. So who thinks that that roof looks like it was built with Legos? It's noon, so the cathedral bells are really ringing. What strikes me about cathedrals here on the European continent versus in Britain is I go in them and they just seem so dark. Has anyone else had that experience? On film, it doesn't look as dark as it does in person. This side chapel has beautiful murals from 1910 on the ceiling. And then also this on the wall, it's very beautifully done. When you sit here in this large park, Colmar does feel like a city. But when you wander around the old town, it's like a little village, a little medieval village inserted in the city. I'm really glad that I came to see this part of Colmar because it really has a big modern city feel to it. As opposed to if I just stayed in the little old town village part, I would have never known how diverse Colmar really was. For our last meal, we are eating at, I don't know how to pronounce this, Le Soir? No idea. Anyway, it's a tiny little restaurant that is supposed to be the best in Colmar. Really tasty Alsatian food and I can't wait to try it. All right, here is our giant Flammkuchen tart flambe with bacon and cream and cheese and onions and chives. Looks delicious. This is our dessert of the tart flambe that is apples drusel and look it's got these wafer thin apples going all the way out to the edge and then this drusel topping with sugar powdered sugar looks so delicious come visit colmar it is a stunningly beautiful place that i highly recommend thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today